Many of the people who fled Mosul live in camps like this one. We'll take a look at how they've been living and what they feel in a moment. But first, what is life like in ISIL-controlled Mosul? Beyond the bridge is ISIL territory, Mosul, the biggest urban center in northern Iraq. Some two million people are believed to still live there, cut off from the rest of the country. There are people who want to leave, but they have to pay ISIL a huge amount of money, which they don't have. They have to provide guarantee like their house to prove they plan to come back. They live in a prison. These people are journalists from Mosul. From the Kurdish-controlled north, they are the voices of those who aren't allowed to speak. They hide their identity. So do their contacts inside the city, because filming could get them killed. They explain how ISIL uses every opportunity to brainwash the people of Mosul. They even preach in malls. According to these journalists, ISIL hides its weapons in civilian neighborhoods so that people will turn against the U.S.-led coalition when it targets the area. ISIL then tries to win them over by providing compensation. And ISIL's message is always the same. People should fight what they call the Shia regime in Iraq and the Crusader war against Muslims. The majority may not support ISIL, but we can't deny there are those who do. ISIL has an ideology and they exploit the long history of oppression against Sunnis. Many prefer ISIL over the Shia government or the Kurds, who they believe want their land. Mosul is surrounded by Kurdish Peshmerga forces from three sides. They have managed to hold the lines with the help of U.S.-led coalition airstrikes. But for now, they have no plan to move towards the mainly Sunni Arab city. Their leadership says they will play a supporting role if and when a decision is made to recapture Iraq's second largest city. The Iraqi government's plans to do so have been stalled, but ISIL has reportedly been preparing for that battle. It has dug a trench around the city and placed concrete barriers as a line of defense, and it is breeding a new generation of fighters. ISIL is recruiting children. We have information that there are a thousand new graduates. There will be sleeper cells in the future since they've brainwashed the children. A major part of ISIL's strategy is to control every aspect of the lives of the people under its rule, and even if it loses ground, ensures its ideology will endure for years to come. Life is just as difficult for those who have been displaced. Dire conditions, UN agencies are complaining that they don't have enough money to help these people. These people feel abandoned by their government. A lot of them believe that there's a conspiracy against them. That's the word they use. There's a conspiracy against Mosul. There's a conspiracy against the Sunnis. They feel that the government is not serious about taking Mosul. Some of the people who left were soldiers in the Iraqi army, and, and they're asking questions up to today. Why did the commanders tell us just to leave our weapons and retreat. So a lot of mistrust, and, and, and this is what the government really needs to do. It needs to bring these people to its side in order for reconciliation uh, to be forged. Um, in, the, in the meantime, these people uh, live in tents, uh, uh, poor sanitary conditions, and, and, and the question they all ask is, when are we going to be able to go home?